So open the agreement. Uh, this is one thing that um, you'll keep getting. So VB02 is listing an exclusion condition type. But rebate agreement is VB02. Right? O and 02. 94. And rebate agreement. You can see the sales volume, the settlement documents, so on and so forth. But we have not created any rebate settlement documents or payment documents so far, right? So you won't get any. To start a partial settlement, click on pay. Okay, pay. And how much do you want to pay? The maximum amount that's available is 10,000. So you can pay 10,000, up to 10,000. Or you can just say you want to pay, let's say, 3,000. All right. So 3000 is what we want to pay. Save. Okay. It says that partial settlement rebate request 6000115 has been created. You don't need to copy it. As soon as you open VA02, you'll get the same number. So it's basically like a credit memo. Right. Out of 10,000 that has been accrued, we are paying 3000 back to the customer. It's like redeeming part of what has been accrued. Okay. Okay, so now go back to VA02 and SAP has automatically created a partial settlement document. It's like a credit memo request. Go remove the billing block and bill. You go look at the condition types. You'll see that that same P002 repeats twice. One is statistical and one is real. Both of them have the same value, $3,000. But one is statistical and the other one is just basically a copy of the statistical with the statistical flag off. And the net value is $3,000. Right? So save it. Now if you go to S060, you'll see that $3,000 has been paid. Right? SC16, S060, that's our LIS accumulation table. And the condition record number is whatever we have entered previously. We see the 3000 has been paid, rebate agreement of 3000 has been paid, and the total is 10,000, right? So, accrual reversed and payments might tend to go hand in hand, but they might differ as well. Okay, go back. You can see the same amount in the rebate agreement itself VBO294. If you go to rebate agreements and rebate documents, you'll see that a partial settlement now has been created, meaning a partial redemption. Right? The customer has taken $3,000 out of the $10,000 that has been accumulated. Now, the opposite of a partial settlement is a partial accrual. Meaning, think of the other scenario that I've mentioned where the almond farm is giving a special incentive to the customer if they place a big placard, right, like a banner. And let's say we are giving this incentive to the customer, in this case, of, let's say, $5,000. And that $5,000 is not given upfront, but it's accrued. So initially, there was $10,000. $3,000 has been paid off as a partial settlement. Now we're going to accrue $5,000. Right? So basically add back to the kitty. And 5000 should be a negative. Okay? If you put a positive, it acts in the opposite way. All accruals should be negative. Okay? So negative 5000, save, and it creates a document of type rebate request for manual accruals. And that's a different document number. Okay? 600116. Well, let's see that. VA02 and the value is zero, right? All accrual, all manual accruals, the value is zero because we're not really actually paying anything back to the customer, right? So it's a debit memo request with zero value, but you should be able to see that when you invoice it and post it to accounts, you'll see those two entries, one positive and one negative. One is into the customer rebate and another is to the customer rebate reserve, right? 
and save it billing document change your display if you go to the accounting document there you go rebate accruals and reserves for the same amount right now if you go to your rebate agreement again slash nvbo2 94 rebate agreements rebate documents you'll see that there are two of these partial settlement manual accruals because we have created two of these documents right so 10,000 is the total reserve uh, let's close this 10,000 is the total reserve 3,000 has been paid back as a partial settlement 5,000 has been accrued right 10 minus 3 is 7 7 plus 5 is 12 so 12,000 should be the new rebate accrual you can see that by just going here so you can see that the total accrual is 15,000 now and 3,000 has been paid. So 15,000 minus 3 should be 12,000, right? So the total accrual so far, excluding the payments, is going to be 12,000. Now finally, maybe at the end of the year, we want to settle this rebate, right? So again, go to VBO2. This time, click on this button, Create Final Settlement. And before you do that, the agreement status has to be changed. This is just so that you know you don't accidentally close this rebate agreement. So if you try and do this without changing the status, it will say minimum status B for final settlement not yet reached. So it's just a checkpoint that all you have to do is change the agreement status from open to agreement released for settlement. Once you do that, a credit memo request was created for this settlement. Right? So what's the credit memo number? Slash N V A zero two. Looks like we did not save it. Let's go save it. Agreement released for settlement and credit memo was created for settlement. Save. Okay. Six zero zero one one seven. Remove the block. Now you should be able to go to the rebate agreement and see all the rebate documents that have been created. Final settlement, partial settlement, manual approvals. And let's not worry about corrections at this point. It's not important. So this is how a rebate is settled, either partially or finally. And of course, any accruals that you want to do can be accrued on. So each of these transactions Partial settlement, final settlement, or manual accruals are basically either credit memo requests or debit memo requests. And each of them have a specific document type. So in this case, partial rebate settlement is B3, sales document type B3, billing document type B3. Right? And this is how you do a manual payment. Click on the pay button. And that will create a B3 document type. And you enter how much you want to accrue per material based on the condition record and it has to be a negative sign only if you are doing accruals if you are doing settlements either partial or final final doesn't need any manual entry but if you are doing a partial settlement that will be a positive but when you are doing an accrual it needs to be a negative value and you have to explicitly put that negative value right document type and you'll see that there is a non-statistical condition type and the customer is actually hit with the value that we are settling it's not statistical anymore right and you'll see that partial settlement actually reverses the accrual right so it it accrues so a manual rebate accrual puts more value in the accruals and a partial settlement reverses the accrual so it's like you put money into the kitty you take it out of the kitty that's all there is to it you know all these different terms sometimes cause confusion but at the end of the day it's just putting money into the kitty or taking out money from the kitty manual accrual puts it into the kitty and for that use a different document type r4 b4 and we know how to do it right manual accrual is accrue 
and put a negative sign here. Well, I think I got it confused. So manual accrual is where you put the negative amount. If you're doing a partial settlement, you don't have to explicitly put a negative amount. Okay, I got that confused. Sorry about that. And it creates a rebate request for manual accrual. And you'll see that the accrued amounts should increase. Right? Putting money back into the kitty. And this is where you should be able to see all the rebate documents that are created. So, so far we have created a manual accrual and a partial settlement. Right? And you should be able to see that. Partial settlement manual accruals. Once you do the final settlement, this radio button should also be enabled. And when you want to do the final settlement, this is the credit memo request document type that's created, B1. How do you do that? Click on this button. Okay. And before doing that, you have to set the status to B. Right. So that's just a checkpoint to ensure that you don't accidentally close the rebate. And the credit memo will be generated. Don't forget to click the save button. This is important. Okay. You have seen that example, right? So, like I said, so many different transactions in a rebate. And at the end of the day, look at this picture. All the yellow boxes, normal accruals, manual accruals, are all statistical. And putting money into the kitty. Okay. All the green walls are real, meaning they actually hit the customer and taking money back from the kitty. That's it, right? And this is of type debit memo. I'm not saying it's a debit memo. It's of type credit memo. The category is of type credit memo, roughly. And this is a credit memo. And each of them uses a specific document type. You don't have to remember B1, B2, R1, R2. You don't have to remember all. Each of them is a specific document type. And that's how you should be able to track what really happened at any given point in time. Now, in the next chapter, we look at the config behind a rebate. So, we have seen or we have used the existing rebate agreements so far. We have not seen how to configure them, how to create a new condition, rebate condition type, so on and so forth. In the next chapter, we'll look at the configuration.